So it feels like a decade ago at this point, Anise, but it was only Friday that we saw that counterattack by Israel on Iran. Iran downplaying it, obviously. But is this a tit for tat that's going to continue or are we done now? The market seems to think we're done. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for having me. I think we are definitely not done. I think, however, the, the tempo and the type of uh, retaliation is unlikely to continue to be the same as what we have seen between April 13 and April 19. Um, so when Iran uh, directly attacked Israel first, and as you mentioned, Israel then retaliated. Uh, we have seen already uh, some potential strikes uh, from Israel uh, in Iraq on Iran-linked assets, and we are likely to continue to see these similar attacks uh, in Syria and in other parts of the region. Uh, but I think for now, it seems that the two countries do not want to go into a, a full-blown confrontation, and that after their signaling, their messaging has been delivered through these attacks, it's time to go back to the type of confrontation that was there before April 1st, which is what triggered these recent escalation. So when uh, Israel allegedly striked uh, the Iranian consulate in Damascus. Uh, that means that uh, the situation remains uh, very, very tense, and uh, we at Control Risk are continuing to monitor the situation uh, continuously because it can uh, shift and uh, change uh, drastically and uh, very quickly. But at the same time, I think for now, it seems that, uh, uh, as the market are signaling as well, uh, the tempo has decreased and uh, the type of retaliation seems similar to what we have seen be between uh, October and uh, the 1st of April. What about the fact that for six months now we've been wondering if proxy wars or proxy attacks will get worse and if Israel will be dragged into another war on a different front? It does seem like daily we're hearing something about, you know, South Lebanon or Syria. Does any of that get out of control? It's a possibility, uh, definitely something that cannot be excluded. So far, we have seen proxies uh, such as Hezbollah, such as Hashid al-Shabi, the PMF, uh, which are uh, located in Iraq, uh, being able and willing to maintain things uh, under certain control with calibrated strikes that do not trigger uh, direct confrontation with Israel. But uh, as we have seen over the past uh, three weeks, uh, things can get out of hand and miscalculation are possible. And uh, especially now in a, in a context in which a lot has happened, which has changed uh, the rule of engagement between the two sides, it is possible that uh, escalation happens. But at the same time, I think it's very clear that neither side seem to want to go in that direction. So if that happens, is an un unintended consequence of the tensions and developments of the of the recent weeks. Anisa, I know that you believe that Israel may have got something in response for a more limited strike against Iran for scaling back perhaps what had been bigger plans. What might that be? Well, I think uh, there were a lot of negotiation happening uh, probably behind the scenes. Uh, it took six days for Israel to retaliate to the 13th of April attack by Iran. Uh, and I think that was mainly due to negotiations with the Western partners, in particular the United States. We have seen already that uh, uh, the West, uh, the US and the EU, and uh, uh, I think other countries as well, but in particular these uh, two blocs, have been uh, implementing, adopting, and uh, promising uh, to adopt more sanctions against Iran, in particular against uh, Iran's uh, drones and uh, missile program, which we know is a big concern for Israel and for other countries in the region. And uh, I think this is one uh, possible uh, lever of influence uh, by the West uh, towards Israel to, if we wish, uh, limit uh, the type of attack that it conducted against uh, Iran. It's possible that we are going to see more sanctions and there is uh, discussions about what this might look like, uh, even potentially on uh, the exports of oil and uh, basically the uh, implementation and enforcement of existing sanctions, but also the listing of the IRGC, the Revolutionary Guard Groups, uh, into the terrorist group by EU countries. This is all in the cards. So this is all an ongoing conversation. We don't know which one will be applied, but uh, I think it's going to be something that uh, the Western countries are going to keep in their uh, on their table mm. for a long time.
Anissa, we did see huge protests in Tel Aviv over the weekend, obviously, you know, against Netanyahu. If something were to happen and he was to not be prime minister, would it change the course of this war at all? Well, uh, it's a very good question. I think we know that uh, uh, Israel uh, has uh, maintained a very hawkish position towards uh, Iran, no matter who has been in power. And especially given the latest developments, uh, the, uh, the war against Hamas since the 7th of October, I think this is unlikely to change uh, uh, drastically. I think the focus might shift slightly depending on who is in power, but the antagonism between the two is unlikely to change. Um, uh, Bibi Netanyahu, however, has uh, historically taken a very, very forceful position against Iran. Uh, we know that he was a proponent of strikes against Iran already back in 10, and already back then, uh, the Western countries uh, were able to refrain uh, Israel from conducting an attack uh, in Iran mm. uh, merely through the adoption of sanctions. So we know that this position is yes. very peculiar of Netanyahu, but there is going to be some continuity no matter who is going to be in power.